Okay. Um, well, let's get let's get started here. Um, this I almost said this morning, this evening. I am so glad that you are here uh, and to uh, kind of talk about sharing sharing our faith. But before we get started, um, I want to open this up in a word of prayer, and then we'll get going. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this opportunity to come together. Thank you for what's happening all over campus today, God, from our preschoolers and children and students and adults here in this room and ESL, God, and food pantry. Just so much ministry happening, and I thank you for that, God, and I thank you that, that you are everywhere. And so, God, I just pray that your name would be glorified today and that people's hearts would be pointed to you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. So um, we, the whole point of this this seminar, there's, there's four Wednesdays. Uh, and and um, we're going to be doing this seminar for four weeks. And the whole idea is just to try to help people to sort of get past obstacles, to get past fears when it comes to sharing our faith. Because the reality is, as Christians, we know we should, right? There's, there's It's not a surprise to you uh, to know that God wants you to share the gospel, that God wants you to share your faith. That's not That's not new information to you. But the reality is, is it can be difficult sometimes. It can be hard. There's, there's so many things that, that they can kind of go through our head, like, what, what do I say? How do I say it? You know, what if I mess up? What if they ask questions? What if they ask questions and I don't have the answer? What if they say no? What if this is awkward? What if it's going to be awkward after we share? Blah, blah, and on and on and on and on. And so, um, so that's hopefully what you're going to, in these next four weeks, is we'll kind of address some of those things. And kind of talk about that. And and here's the here's the reality. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little awkward until you start doing it, right? It's just gonna be that way. And and the more that you do it, the more opportunities that you have, then the easier it's gonna get. I won't say it'll always it'll be easy. I just say it's the easier it's gonna get. And I have a, a confession to make because we went to uh, uh, Peru um, this summer. And um, with international commission, and it was a lot of walking up to people in parks and in different areas and just creating a conversation and, and, and sharing the, and trying to share the gospel. And before every conversation, okay, before every conversation, I was like, oh, this is going to be so weird. This is going to be so weird. This is going to be so weird. Okay. I, and so I, I just say that to you, like as, as preacher boy, I mean, it's not easy for me either. Um, I, I don't I don't walk. I, you know, that's just not how I was wired to walk up and to say, you know, hey, hell's hot and long. You know where you're headed? You know, I, I, I don't do that. Um, and so it's it, it was difficult for me. And here's the other thing, too, though, that the whole point of this 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 four weeks is not we're not going to leave here and go knock on doors. We're not asking you to go to go visit strangers. We're just talking about sharing the gospel in, with the people that you know, people that you do life with, people that you see uh, on, on, a, on a weekly or daily basis, because that those are the people that God has called us to share. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with going door to door, going to see strangers. That's great. We have people in our church who do that. Uh, and, and there's been a lot of great conversations and, and a lot of Lord's done a lot through that. But what I'm talking about and what we're focusing on here. It's just being able to, to share the gospel and to be confident enough to take just a step of faith to say, you know what, I'm going to step out and do that. And so that's 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 what it's it's what's what we're doing this week. And so um, over the next four weeks, we'll, we'll talk about different obstacles, what we'll talk about. And uh, Tom's going to come up here in a minute. And he'll, he'll go over some obstacles with you. And we want you to talk. We, we want you to ask questions. We, we want to go back and forth and, and dialogue about this. But then at the end or, or towards the end of every night, we're going to just share a different gospel tool. Um, so tonight I'm going to use I'm going to talk about the ABCs. It's a, if you've ever seen um, it's one that Brother Chad used a vacation Bible school every year. And he used a lot. Of, I'm going to go over that with you just to give you a tool uh, next week. Bob's talking about the Roman road. Yeah. Correct. Right. And then Heather, which one are you doing? I think I'm the last week. You're the last three circles. Three circles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mary's, what is Mary doing? The bridge. The bridge, the bridge illustration, which the bridge and the one I'm showing you today are, are a lot similar, um, real similar. But um, these are just give you, these are just tools to, to use. And uh, I've heard Tom say it. I've heard a lot of people say it. You know, the best tool, the best evangelism tool is the one that you will use. Right. So whichever one is you're comfortable with you, that's that's what, and and when, by the way, when we were in Peru, I, I used several different ones just based on the conversation I was having. But um, if I were to have a conversation with uh, with a friend, like if I was just to sit down with a friend of mine and to share the gospel, um, it, 
I don't, there wouldn't be like one go-to tool. I would just sort of, and sometimes I combine them and I just mesh them all together and those types of things. So um, I wanted to, I wanted to read something to you before I turn it over um, uh, to Tom. And it's this quote that I read in an article. And this is an uh, article I, I actually emailed to our BFG leaders today. And by the way, Sunday, uh, we're closing out our entrusted series. And what we're talking about Sunday is we're entrusted with the gospel. And so we're going to be talking about sharing our faith. And, and we're going to, you'll hear me talk about this on Sunday. And we're going to do a challenge on Sunday, too, about, you know, who's your one. But anyway, here, here's, here's this article, uh, a quote. It says, as the old saying goes, what grips the heart wags the tongue. Or to put it the way Jesus does, out of an abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we speak out of what we are full of. And this is an inescapable fact of human psychology. We are always, listen to this, we are always evangelizing. We are always speaking of what is holy to us. If something is sacred, set apart, consecrated, or of first importance, it will overflow from our hearts and into our conversations. So that's why Peter counsels us to fill our hearts with Christ the Lord. And here's the verse he's talking about, 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Okay. And the reason why you do that is because then you will always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so one of the things that I think that's, that's, that maybe has happened here at, in our church is our church has sort of gotten focused on a method, but we've forgotten the mission. And, and really, evangelism is not about a method. It's about a mission. It's, it's, and you'll hear me say this Sunday. Evangelism is a heart issue, right? And so what we want to do is we want to we speak out of an overflow of, of our heart. And it doesn't matter what tool you use. It's just a matter of us being and doing what God has called us to be and what God has called us to be. Okay? All right, Tom, you're up. Yeah. Great to see you. Thank you very much for coming. All of you? Good, good. And I, I know a lot of you, and so, but I've just met a couple of you tonight, so the first time, so thanks for coming. Um, Jimmy mentioned something at the very beginning, and I've said this a million times, that the, the most important, the best tool is the one you actually use. And there are a lot of them out there, and what I've just distributed is one we're not going to cover. <laughs> All right. But it's, it's just another one. It's called the Two Kingdoms. And I'm just going to let you take it home. We're not going to cover it tonight. But just to say, there are so many different ways to do this. All right. So what I'd like to talk about now is, is this. Uh, what, uh, what are the obstacles or what are the barriers that we face when it comes to sharing our faith, sharing the gospel, or even having spiritual conversations. And I'd like to do it this, this way. To think about those that are things that we can't control. And there are things, right? So I'd like, this is going to be a feedback session. So I, I don't have a... Bunch of stuff just to unload. <laughs> but I'd like for you to like to hear you. What do you think? There's some obstacles. Fear and rejection. What? Fear and rejection. Fear. Okay, well, that's that's me. Think about people outside of you. Things that are outside of you that stand in the way. How about fear of how they react? Their reaction. Okay, well, that's another internal. That's another thing that comes so, back to me. So like with my coworkers and stuff is that usually the time is just full of, of work stuff or it's yeah. sometimes there's too many and there's the time isn't that naturally created. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or I'm letting it. I mean yeah. you know, obviously well yeah but if that's a real thing. If you talk about the workplace, yeah. There are some places where that's strictly for forbidden, right? Yeah. So I'll put that down. That's a gimme. All right. What else can you think of? Having an appropriate 
opening. Okay, that, that comes back to me. Interest. Yeah, that comes back to me. Are they opening like into the country or into the? No, I mean, yeah, no, I mean about in a conversation. All right, how do you? Let, let's uh, let's do this over here. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. That's a good one. But that belongs over here. All right. What about this? How easy is it to go around the world to share the gospel? Financial restraints. Financial restraints. Okay. Yeah, that's that kind of goes both ways, doesn't it? That you have culture too, culture very, very much so. Including you have other beliefs that mm -hmm. you come up against. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to share. It's hard to share with somebody who doesn't have any idea who God is. Right? If, if you ever had that conversation, yeah. What else can you think of? What about you? Talk about who said culture? Is that you, Rosemary? Bob, what do you what do you have in mind here? That's a good one. Yeah, I'm thinking, and it, it ties into other beliefs too. I right? so, yeah. so when I'm thinking of culture, I'm thinking like some that maybe have a you know, sort of a Muslim background, or yeah, you know, maybe they're a Buddhist background, or you know, they're happen to uh, have, happen to be you know, as a lot of Indians are. Um, I'm trying to think of their yeah Hindu type. So so like how 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 do you approach them? You know. Yeah. Yep, it's a good point. Right. Think it, if, you know that in some parts of the world, you can be killed if you're a Christian. We don't live in that part of the world, but but that's a real thing. And so that is, people who live in those environments are naturally going to have walls, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's go. Let's switch gears and go over to this side. And some of you've already said. How to, how to start, how to, fear. what was it? Fear and rejection. Fear, yeah. Fear of rejection. And I, somebody else had one. I said, recognizing an opening. Yeah. I mean, recognizing, you know, how do you, how do you, like you said, like Jimmy said, you just don't walk up and say, hey, you're right. what else? <laughs> How to start. How to start. How to start. How to start. That way, okay? and that's, a, that's a very real one. And next week, we're going to have a, a, a special emphasis on that very thing. But let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's say, let's say you've got a family member that's lost. How do you start that conversation? It's on the history, probably, you know, um, if there's been, you know, in what you know of the past or what's happened in the past. Yeah. Um, if it's family, you know that it could be, it could be a really hard thing or not just. Yeah. Hard thing. Yeah. So it's, you know. Yeah. I, I, with my brother, my little brother, um, I kind of chickened out because I was in a different town than them. Not that I can't visit him, but I wrote a letter. And uh, but I started out with an apology. And my apology was that I, I'm sorry that I haven't talked to you about this soon because it's really important. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was sort of a again, yeah. it was a letter, so you know that probably doesn't count, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, it was definitely that I knew to your point, there was there's history there, they know me, and so I just I, I want to say, hey, I, I just I recognize that this should have been a, a conversation we had that I should have shared with you. Soon. Okay, that's great. So I've got a brother too, it's older than I am. And uh, Julia knows a little bit of this background. Jimmy may know some too. I've been trying for years to have a gospel conversation with. Him. And actually had an appointment last uh, 
February or March. <clears throat> they canceled the day before, but there was a legitimate reason, but we never got it rescheduled. So, all right, what if you got a co worker? Oh, um, Jimmy? Well, fear of rejection. Yeah. I think that uh, we we just don't want to be rejected. We don't want to be too obvious sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm getting older, I don't care as much about that. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I know this, but... are, are we afraid of losing a friendship or a relationship? Yeah. Yeah. So what's. I'll come back to you, Bob. So, what is what is there uh, the win lose situation with that with relationship? I think we put too much weight on ourselves and not yeah. enough weight on what the Holy Spirit of God will do with it. So, thinking, oh no, I'm going to mess this up, and if I hurt this relationship, I'm not going to get another chance. Well, that again, I limit is God, but you know that. To me, I do not enjoy conflict. And so sometimes this feels like it's a conflict type thing. And so I just want to go hide as far as possible from conflict usually. So um, yeah. I'm trying to change my my view on this and, and maybe I went wrong. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, is it true that ultimately They're hearing the gospel trumps. <laughs> oh, totally. Yes. Sir. Yeah. What we fear. And if you lose a relationship, is there a place in the scripture that Jesus said something about that? Yeah. Well, these were good. What other, Bob? Yeah. So I guess, I guess as I reflect back, um, and so I'm with a coworker, and I'm maybe out of lunch, and I want to share. Um, just if I summarize what my emotions and things, that's what I'm trying to think of internal. And I would say it's kind of anxiety. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, uncomfortable, yeah, uncomfortable anxiety. Okay. Yeah, because it's like, you know, you start getting sweaty palms or this and that, and you think, and you know, it makes me think a little bit for people who are paralyzed by anxiety. Um, you know, maybe I'm not going to say I experienced it as bad as them, but that might be a touch of it. So it's it's yeah. kind of, yeah. you just, and, and you're anxious because of a lot of things. Fear of rejection. What are you going to say? What if they yeah. say this? What if I don't know the answer? Mm -hmm. uh, the fear of rejection. If, if they say no, who are they saying no to? No. The Lord, <laughs> they're not saying yeah. anything, but you just plant a seed out there. Exactly. Right. So, does that give us a little bit of freedom? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Freedom. I have a story, Tom. My brother also is not a believer, my younger, older brother. And he had a friend pass away, mm -hmm. and he wanted me to come to the funeral. And I knew, I was like, I know why you're sending me, God. I know where I'm going. I know the whole way. It was kind of like what y'all were, the sweaty, my palms sweat thinking about it <laughs> right now. And I, we went to the funeral. I was getting ready to leave. I was putting it off, putting it off. I'm sitting there. We're watching the World Cup. I'm like, okay, next commercial. You know, I'm like, okay, next commercial. Yeah. And then finally, I was just like, I love you too much not to share this with you. And I burst into tears, of course, because that's what girls do, I guess. But I was like, I have to tell you this, and I'm sorry I hadn't done it sooner, you know. Um, but it's that, it is that anxiety. And somebody told me one time, sometimes that tension means that means yeah. you're supposed to do it. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, the Holy Spirit. Do it. <laughs> I think too, Tom, an internal an internal struggle for me in a way is just the idea of assumptions. Mm -hmm. Because I'm assuming how things are gonna go well, or how it. they might play out, or just mm -hmm. assuming that this is gonna be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Um and and honestly it's not it's not always that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I can I I've, I've had experiences like that where you don't know what to expect if you're if you're meeting somebody that you don't know that well. You really can you? How can you know <laughs> what's going to happen? And that's that's a that straight jacket sometimes, or 
a tight fitting jacket. <laughs> what about this? Let's say you know somebody who has known you all your life, or maybe not you, but somebody that you know, okay? And there was a time in your life where you didn't live the Christian lifestyle before you were saved. And they know that history. What would somebody do in that circumstance? Remind you. Remind you of your whole life. Yeah. Or you remind yourself, which keeps you from yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but then, so what do they do? What does that, they, let's say they've really been repented. They've surrendered their lives. Things are new. They've been made new. They're walking a new way. So how do they deal with that situation? It depends I mean, on these great testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and hopefully you know, the person he knows who knows you has seen a change. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes that could be a powerful thing, you know, just the way you walk, the way you talk, and they will recognize it. One thing Pastor Chad and we learned learned over the several years is that no one you know can argue or uh, about your story. Mm -hmm. And because it's yours. That's right. And yeah. uh, you know, I've held, held on to that phrase in my head. It's this is my story. And it's not like you can say, well, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Like, no, this is you know, this is what happened with me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I've been around um adults who are new believers as adults, and I envy their fire that they they have, and it's like you know, because I remember, you know, I have that fire, you know, not that I don't still have it, but that I don't care. I want everybody to know, and right, I, right. I'm working towards making getting that back and having that. Yeah. But I I've met a couple of ladies who, you know, Jesus found them as an adult, and they're just lit, and yeah, that's like, yeah. so exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. Just like you it, would be around that. The <laughs> contrast between before and after. Before and after. They've right. got a contrast. You know, those of us I was saved when I was a little boy. Yeah. So I wasn't hell bound other than I was hell bound. Yeah. But I was not hell bound here in my head to think about how, what can I do? <laughs> like, but I also say I was just as lost mm -hmm. as the worst sinner that's ever lived. Right? So we all have that before and after story. <laughs> and that's one way to talk about hey, hey. Say, John, Sally, you knew me growing up. And we did some stuff together, didn't we? But, you know, I came to the point where I realized that's not what life is about. And I had an encounter, experience with Jesus Christ. And I turned away from all that. And he's made me a new person. And I'd like to share that story with you. What about this? That's the, for instance, the before and after. Let's say somebody uh, has got a friend or a co-worker, relative, uh, and let's say that their lifestyle is not all that great from a Christian perspective. So how are they going to approach sharing the gospel? Negatively. What? Negative, like a negative, because they don't want to accept it. It would be a negative. My sister is um, like super, I don't even know what she, what's going on with her, but like um, she, a lot of my family are just not believers and they don't want to like hear it. Like they yeah. think of me negatively yeah. because, you know, they know that I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian. So I, I would. Uh, there was a conversation I had a guy with a guy not too many years ago, and I asked him this question because he came out of a pretty rough background. And I said, Joe, do you think you could share the gospel if you had a beer in your hand? What do you think? <laughs> I know I couldn't, but uh, <laughs> so it, it, and so that person, if you have a person that you know who said, yeah, I know, I know, I need to share the gospel, but their, their, their witness is not consistent with the message, they've got some work to do, right? All right. 
Well, there are other, other, oh, I got a, I got a page and a half. We're not going to deal with all that. But recognize there are ways to, especially internally, we can control those or the Holy Spirit can work on us <laughs> to control those those fears, those anxieties, so that, uh, all those things to be able to have that start, start that conversation. Now, the someone said, how, yeah, how do you start? We're really going to go spend some time on that next week. So please come back. How to start that conversation. So I'm going to turn it back over to Jimmy to go over the, the gospel tool. So I had a quick question, and I want to, what, what questions do you have? So you, you, you've heard some of these uh, barriers to the gospel or to sharing the gospel. Some are internal, some are external. What what questions do you have? Because here's the thing, you know, again, I said this at the very beginning. We all, as believers, we all know we should share the gospel. We, we know it. It's not, it's not new. It's, it's, it's blatantly obvious in Scripture. It tells us to. And so there is this ideal, right? In the ideal world, we're all just out there, just doing our thing, just, you know, every chance we get, we're, we're sharing the gospel. But then there is that real and this, these internal things that we talked about, those are those are sort of the real things. And I think sometimes the internal things keep us from sharing probably more than the external would. But just, I, I just love to hear from you if you have questions or you have just. I, I don't want to. I don't want to jump to this tool until until you know it's, we're ready to do that. Or any thoughts or concerns, or is there a specific issue you're thinking about? I have sometimes when I'm trying to figure out, you know, who do I talk to, period. And like a lot of times I've been trying to work on now is when people that you work with in the grocery stores and places like that, sometimes there's an opening. And then after I leave, I think, why didn't I say this? Right. And so maybe the ability to be more aware of when someone's giving you an opening. Right, right. Is yeah, that's a good one. And and I think part of that, what I would say is, is this idea of, of intentionality. In other words, um, because I don't, and again, let me let me let me preface everything I'm about to say is like I don't do this perfectly or do this all the time. So uh, sometimes I'm a better teacher than an actual app application guy. <laughs> but I think I think this idea of of, you know what, I'm looking for opportunities. Because I think sometimes we just wake up, right, and we go about our day, and we just do the routine because that's kind of what we're we, we, how we do life. It's just every day. But if we sort of kind of thinking about, okay, God, help me today to look for opportunities, then I think those are the things that we'll start to see and, and start start to 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 to, uh, to notice. I think a uh, 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 a dumb example for me is like when I when I buy a certain vehicle or, or I'm thinking about a certain vehicle, it's amazing how many of those vehicles I start seeing because I'm just I'm just I'm just more aware of them. I could drive beforehand. I drive by them all the time, never think about it. But now because it's top of mind, I, I start to see them. Like we were driving the other day and I what what color was it? It's like a flat color. Is that what it is? I, I was noticing? I saw this car and I just love the way the color it was, a flat color. And. And then I was just thinking about that. And as we were driving on 75, I just started seeing them everywhere. But before that time, you know, I, I, I'm sure they were, it wasn't like they just magically appeared. They were always there, but I'm just paying attention now. And I, so I, I think some of that is, you know, if you're going to your job or you're going, you know, going to visit family or you're, you know, you're going to be at the gym with people that you know and see or wherever you are. It's like, God, help me, help me to be intentional, just to be intentionally listening to an opportunity um, to, to start a conversation or, or to jump into a conversation with them about that. And so, and I'm excited that next week we're, you know, we're going to be talking about how to start those conversations. But that's a, that's a great point. Um, someone else? I guess the problem I have is like, I don't, I haven't really been reading the Bible. So I don't really know like 100% what everything says. So it's like if they ask me a question. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to be like, oh, let me get back to you on that. That's like, scary. I got to, like, that's scary, too. Yeah. And, and and that's that's a great one because that keeps a lot of people from doing it because it's like, okay, I don't know enough to share, right? Because, again, the, the questions that they get. 
So I'm going to, I don't know if this is, this is sort of fairly new, but I don't know if you've ever heard of Google. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously, I, I think, I, I think one of the best things that you can do is, is just code it, Google, and you have to be careful what you search for online, but, but just, you know, some verses, what are some good verses to share, you know, to share the gospel and, and, and you'll get some verses. And, and here's the other thing too. You don't have to know the scriptures. And I have said this a ton of times, and I kind of lean on this. It's like, I don't know, but I'll, I'll find out and I'll come back because they, they're right. They may ask you questions. And I would say, you know what? That's a great. And I've done this before, too. That's a great question. Let's look that up together real quick. And so I'll, I'll type it in. And I'll, OK, look, here's the Bible. The Bible says, you know, Google says the Bible says, and you go to the Bible and say it says this, and you have that question. And so I don't, I would, I would say, don't be afraid that you have to know it all because we don't. I mean, and, and but just because I know that that would keep me um, from doing it too. Now, I'm not saying, okay, you don't have to read the Bible. I mean, I think sort of that's also then a challenge for you to say, you know what, I want to read more, and and I want to be, I don't read some specific things about, you know, sharing my faith or, or what it means to share the faith or some questions or some truths. And, and you know, another thing I would say is ask me or email us at the staff. We can give you a lot of resources as far as verses that you can and share in your faith. But that's that's a great one. So I would just say, don't be afraid of not knowing all the answers um, and don't be afraid of not knowing scripture in depth because, again, you can always just say, you know what, I don't know, but I'll, I'll find out. And, and, and we'll come back to this. Um, and, and I want you to ask me so that I'll, that'll remind me to, to come find out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and to me, that's just, it's helpful because I, I, I just don't think I, I can't come in. And I, the other thing is I can't anticipate, you know, what questions they might ask. And they may ask a question that's completely out of left field. And I was like, yeah, I've never even thought about that. Yeah. But I, I, I want to, I want to figure, you know, I want to try to figure that out. Some years ago, I went to, I did a, a training thing on evangelism explosion. Mm -hmm. You had to memorize a gazillion stuff. And, uh, and that, that was, that was so hard. Mm -hmm. And so there are ways to share the gospel. You don't have to memorize all that stuff. You had, you'd have to know how to share it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things tonight is going to be one of those tools. Yeah. And for the next three weeks, yeah, there are ways to share it without mm, having to be a, an encyclopedia. Good. Mm -hmm. What else? And if something, if you think of something, I mean, obviously, like I said, we're gonna be meeting the next three weeks. So come with your questions. Come with your, come with your stories. Come, you know, come ready to ask, and 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 we can we can walk through some stuff. Mm -hmm. or we can role play some. We can we can do whatever. But um, so. One of my starters is um, I always ask, um, not always, but sometimes I'll ask about the church. And you go to church anymore? Or you ask like about, okay, what'd you do this weekend? I'll ask them, and then typically they'll ask you what you did this weekend. You can talk to them about church. Or, you know, hey, growing up and your family was church of the or, you know, why or why not? That's just an easy way to kind of get into the question. And I think one of the things... And, and talk, and again, this is talking with people that you know, people that you do life with. Is I, I try, I try to kind of, I think of it as a funnel, in the sense of there's, there's just some broad questions that you talk about all the time, and then after, after a little bit, then you start sort of getting into some of the meat, and some of the deeper questions about, you know, hey, what do you think about? It? And did you watch the news? What do you think about it? it this is crazy, right? And you, and you can just use some different things about that or back to talking with someone that you've known for a long time and you've never shared um one of the things i've done i said i've said is that you know we've we've talked about everything under the sun but i've never shared with you one of the most important things ever and just and so some of you guys can kind of said that before and so you know but those are just those are just for free and you have paper in front of you, and so if you want to write this down, sort of to, to kind of help you remember, that's that's great. But um, one of the things that, that we talk about is, you know, in in the Bible it talks about the heart, and when it talks about the heart, it's not talking about you know this thing that's inside of our chest beating, you know, beating and, and pushing blood everywhere. It, it's talking about it's sort of like this idea of who we are. Um, our, our thoughts, our feelings, it, it's basically our, our, the, the essence of, of who we are. And the, and, and the Bible says that, that in our hearts, we have a, 
there's something wrong with it. And what what's wrong with it is this word called sin. You know what sin is? Or how, or how would you define sin? Um, and basically what sin is, is, is sin is it's breaking God's rules. It's it's this 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 way that God has called us to live and, and, and we've chosen to live a different way. And um, so um, what we're trying to do is a lot of people know we have this problem, but but we're trying we're trying to uh, fix it and and but we, we can't fix it. Um, you know, we, we've all been probably guilty of lying, we've been guilty of, you know, of, of being selfish, we've been guilty of a lot of, a lot of different things, but, but, you know, we just, we just have this issue, and, you know, the world's filled with sin, we, we see it all the time. Now, I, I want to show you, what do you know about, and I just write it, I'm not like, I can't, I'm not a good, I can't draw a good castle, but like <laughs> chat, like chat, but, and I just say, so you, you've heard about heaven, you've heard about heaven, right? Yeah. What do you know about heaven? And they know some, you know, they'll know some things like it's, you know, it's up in the sky, it's in the clouds, or they may know things like streets of gold, or they may know all kinds of stuff. And I would just say, you know, heaven is a great place because of all the things um, that are that are 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 there, right? And one of the biggest things about heaven that makes it heaven is that God is there. God's in heaven, and God says that this is. This is this is a perfect place, and one of the great things about heaven is all the bad things that aren't there, right? There's no sickness in heaven. There's no death in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. There's no suffering in heaven. But one of the things that that is also not in heaven is this: there's no sin in heaven. So then I go, do you see a problem, right? So. If there's no sin in heaven, and we all have sin, what what do we do? What do we do about this? How can how can we how can we fix this? Because every religion in the world is trying to fix this problem. They're trying to fix this idea of you know what? There's there's something that that is keeping me from over here, and I'm trying to fix it. And so people. And people think that they can fix it with money. People think they can fix it by being good. People think they can fix it by going to church. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. But what has happened, what we realize is, is that our sin creates this wall between us and God. And that's bad news. It's bad news what God did. Um, it's bad news what we've done, what our sin has done. But there's a verse in the Bible. And it's just John 3, 16. You may have heard it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him not perish, but have everlasting life. And in this verse, we see something that God did to fix this problem. And what God did was, God sent Jesus. God loved us so much that he sees this and he doesn't want this to happen. He doesn't want us to be separated from him. He wants us to be in relationship with him. But right now, there is this issue that keeps us separated from God. It's from sin. And so, and what, what the Bible says is that our sin separates us from God, and our sin costs us some. Sin costs us. Um, it's cost us death. Not just physical death, but eternal death. Eternal separation from God. And so God chose to fix this problem, and he did it by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross. And what's interesting is what he died for. He died for our sins, not his sin, because he lived a perfect life. He lived a perfect life, and he died on the cross for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. If you remember the, the story, Jesus Christ died, and three days later, he arose. And when he arose, what that did was, it proved that he was who he said he was, and it, it proved that he was able to do what he said he could do. And so he died in our place so that we could then be forgiven and we could have a new heart, right? And then this would be taken care of because he's died for our sins. And so our sin is separated, our, our sin is taken away. And so then we can then be in relationship with him, right? That's that's the message. For God 
so loved the world, the world was us, that he gave his only one, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, remember sin separates, but would have eternal life. And so this is the message of Jesus Christ. And here's the thing. The Bible tells us that um, this is something that he wants to give to you. So it's, it's a gift that he wants to give to you. And um, so let's, let's just say, like this phone as an example. If I was going to come over here and say, you know, Tom, this is your phone. Is it yours? I said it was his. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not his. When does it become his? When you give it to him. That's right. When he takes it. When I give it to him and then he physically takes my phone, right? I don't make any calls on that. <laughs> <laughs> People are texting me. I don't want you to read it. Is that an upgrade? Yeah, I want to... no. <laughs> yeah, you have to take it. And here's how, here's how you take that gift. Okay, and by the way, all the things that I've said, you can you can say this however you want to. This is just this is just a guide. But here's how you accept. Here's how you take that gift, and it's as easy as A B C. And A B C, what A B C is actually is actually a prayer. It's a prayer, and the A stands for this. You admit. Well, what am I admitting? Well, I'm admitting that I'm a sinner. That I, I have sin in my life, that I have broken God's rules. That's what I'm admitting. And I'm also admitting that there's absolutely nothing that I can do to fix that. I, I, I can't, I can't give enough money, I can't be good enough, I can't go to church enough. I, I can't do any of that. I, I have a problem and I can't fix it. So that's what I'm admitting. And then the B, believe. What am I believing? I'm believing in God's love for me and that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. And Jesus didn't stay dead, but he arose from the grave. And I believe that he died. I believe, I believe that he lived on this earth. I believe that he died on the cross. And I believe that he was resurrected from the dead. And because that happened, then I no longer have, I no longer have sin. I've, I've accepted his forgiveness of my sin. And so I have this new life. That's what I believe in. I'm believing in what Christ did, not what I do, because what I do doesn't, doesn't do anything. And then the last one is confess. What am I confessing? That's just another way to say, you know what? I, I, I love Jesus, and I need his forgiveness, and I need, my, I need a new life that he can offer, and I confess that out loud with my mouth, that Jesus, you are the Lord, you are my Savior. Uh, and I want you to come into my life. And not only am I saying this to myself, but I'm also, I, I'm going to confess it to anyone I can tell that I have a new life in Christ. And when you pray this prayer, then the Bible says that if you believe it with all your heart, that you are saved, that you belong to him. And then I would just say, any questions? Now, again, that's not exactly how Chad did it. Um, and I, every time I do it, I do it a little bit differently. But you get the, you get the whole, you get the bones of it, right? You get the sin and, and what sin is done. You get heaven and what heaven's about and what's not in heaven is, and this is going to look a lot like when Mary does the bridge. You'll see a lot of similar things. Heaven, right? And what's not in heaven. Sin's not in heaven. Problem. What do we do? Well, we try to fix it. And you look at other religions. Religions are always trying to figure out how to get to God. How do I get to God? How do I get to God? But Christianity is the only religion where God came to us, right? So you get that and you talk about the cross and what he did and how that, what that did for us gave us, forgive, forgave us our sins. It got rid of that barrier, that wall between us and God and allows us to be in relationship with God. And so what do you have to do? You have to admit Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ is who He says He will, is who He said He was. Did what He said He did. What He what said what He did, and um, and that you you need Him and you confess it. You say, God, I want you to come into my life. I want you to make me feel. Any any questions? Any thoughts? Feedback? And to your point, Jimmy, you're exactly right. This is that was I don't know how long it took me to do that. 
but yeah, that's when you have an opportunity to sit down and you're having coffee with someone or you're at you're at home with someone because it's a family member or you're at work and you're on a lunch break together. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is not a this is not of a guy, you know, the mailman's dropping by your house and you say, like, hey, can we you've got a second way to do this. I mean, again, because what, what we're talking about is is um, you know, just with people that you know, people that, that you do life with, people that you come in contact with. Now there are other tools. Um, that we can share with you. Um, you know, Tom knows one. I know one. Heather knows you know, several. Of you know these where it's just like okay, you got you've heard of the you've heard of you know the fifteen second testimony, right? But you know, before I knew Christ, you know, I I was I was hopeless and I and I was anxious. But but I you know, but because of the love of Jesus Christ, I now know I have purpose and I have peace. You have a story like that. That's the gospel. You know, I just shared that. Right, because I don't have I don't have five ten minutes to sit down with. Them. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the different tools require or with different situations. But what we just want to do is we want to give you an opportunity to have have some of you know have something that you can work on, something that you can do. I love that. I love this class because that will make people more nimble. Yeah, right. Yeah, we see absolutely. all these different ways, and we know the gospel, yeah. so it'll just yeah. Yeah, there's also a way to use this verse and share the gospel. John 3 16. Mm -hmm. You just read that verse and you can share that one. Go ahead. So, I was just gonna say, um, yeah, you know, Jim's right last time, you know, you don't have time, but in learning all of these, you come up with a core thing to say. Mm -hmm. And that gave me the confidence to say anything. If I could just take, like you said, you you put them all together sometime. It's just what since it's your story, you can organize it in a way you can say it a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But if you have time, these are really good. Yep. And also, there's always this, there's always the idea of like, hey, I, as, if it's somebody that you don't know or somebody you're kind of running into real quickly, like, hey, we don't have time for this, but I, I'd love to, I'd love to tell you more about this if you ever want to know. You know, you can give them your contact information. So there's always, there's always, there's always ways. But yeah, to your point, you don't always have that. You've got, they call it the 15 second testimony because it's super fast. So something that I also think is that gives me um, just a reassurance is I don't know that every meeting is a a full full gospel presentation meeting like you were saying. You don't always have time, but and I need to do this more um, working toward it. But how, you know, you see someone and you can read, read the face, read the body language. How can I pray for you today? Mm -hmm. You seem like something's going on. Can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. And I had a good friend, um, I used to work at a Christian school, so it was more of a natural language to, to talk about the Lord mm -hmm. just every day. And she would stop, you know, I'd tell her, hey, this is going on. She would just, let's pray right now. And, and it would it'd always make me stop because I was like, oh, but just you know, my my sister looks for opportunities like that, and I need I need both of those. But can I pray for you? That's you know, it. You look like you know, I'm really sorry your dog died. Can I pray for you? Know, yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a great that's a great thing to do because as believers, it's not just a thing we say. Right. We believe in the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, hey, you know, is there anything I pray about for you? And if you see them often, yeah. they're gonna know, yeah. and then they're gonna look yeah. for you to say, hey, I need you pray for you. It's funny too. Um, Rick Hands always tells a story because in his office, his place of work, you know, he he would have a Bible, and sometimes he would be reading it, and people would see it, and he he just said, I I never, I mean, he would talk to people who, but he goes, a lot of people came to him because of the Bible. And they would bear their souls to him or talk about problems with him. With him. And so then that gave him an opportunity because they are approaching him at, in, in corporate America. And he would just be able to speak into their marriages, speak into to, you know, their individual lives, speak into different things just because of, of, of an opera, just because of, you know, just his willingness to, you know, not just lay the Bible on their desk, but I mean, like read it and, and be open with it. Um, but but again, I just think little opportunities like that where you can say, you know what? Normally, I would I, I wouldn't take this opportunity, but today I'm going to. I'm just going to say, can I? What can I pray about for you? Good, good things. Anything else? These are all good thoughts, good questions. Yes, sir. Well, I, if I was going to suggest that we practice. Okay. Can we just take not do the whole blown thing, but just walk through it in the outline form with or somebody close by? 
Sure. That That's, be, yeah. If that, yeah. If you want to, if you want to try that, you're more than welcome to try that. I mean, you could, you could start with maybe just this, this very beginning. Like if you wanted to talk about our hearts, right. And this is how I break it up. Talk about our hearts, talk about heaven. Okay. And talk about the problem, the, the, the problem with that. And then the solution and then the, the follow through. So, I, I mean, I just did that on the fly. One, two, three, four. But yeah, so uh, if you'd like to do that, maybe just at your table, if you want to go through a little piece of it or whatever, I'll give you an opportunity to do that. There's, we got about like six minutes left. So feel free. Okay. I'm good. I'm going to interrupt you, but you can, as soon as I finish here, you can keep talking and doing your thing. But I just want to remind you um, next week, we're going through the Roman Road. That's going to be the evangelism tool that we'll talk about. Uh, week three, we're going to do the bridge illustration. And week four, I hope, hopefully, I got that right. Then we'll go over the three circles. Some of you know the three circles already, but it might be a good refresher. Mm -hmm. um, but again, come, come with your questions. Come with your comments. Come because well, that's that's what this is about. Again, this this is about helping us to be um, to be um, what God has called us to be. Right to to, to share the gospel. And um, so I, I just want to challenge you um, to. Uh, to do that and hopefully this will help you overcome some of those obstacles and who knows maybe between now and then between now and next week god might give you an opportunity to do that and if he does uh so we'd love to hear about it okay tom anything before you yeah go? yeah one last thing uh that's what that may happen but what i would ask you to to make happen you got somebody who's a believer just at home or somebody you know just just practice mm -hmm. and then if that other opportunity comes along yeah, that, that's great. So yeah, especially yeah, if, if you have kids, teenagers, they love it. <laughs> they won't roll their eyes at all and go, okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me let me let me, uh, let me close with some prayer and we'll be good. God, I thank you for this day and I thank you for for God for for appointing us as your ambassadors. You could have done it a thousand other ways, and sometimes God, we wish you would have, but you didn't. You chose to to use us. So God, thank you that we go in uh, under your authority. God, we go with your power, but more importantly, we're carrying the message. And so, Father, I pray that we would be faithful with that. Thank you for an opportunity to come in here and just to be honest and open about our struggles, God. We all struggle. And, uh, God, it's just good to be together and to encourage one another. We love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you.